Mr. Johnson, six minutes. Thank you. Um, thank you for being here. Uh, I, um, I want to go back to the $42.8 million. Um, is there a number that the department asked Treasury for uh, that, you know, like it's, again, it's my understanding that the, the department asked for double what they got. Can you confirm that? We, we, I wouldn't say it's double. We did ask for more money, but it depends can, can on. Can you tell me the number? Uh, no, I'm not privy to giving you the number. Oh, okay. Uh, sorry. Um, Maybe I we could request that, Mr. I, Chair. I can't get provide that, that number. That, that's discussions with Treasury Board. So okay. we, we did ask for more. Yeah. And um, we got the number we got, and we are extremely pleased we got money from government to do this. And uh, we, we are going to do everything in our power to uh, make, uh, make as much progress with this money as possible. I, I really believe that. Uh, I, I do have concerns. You know, when we had the minister here and we were trying to get an idea, where did they come up with this number? And, you know, the question I asked the minister, what analysis did they put on, you know, the, the service delivery to come up with this number. And there's no analysis done. I mean, that, that amazes me. You know, this is a lot of money, and uh, we've got a lot of, a huge backlog. And to not have a number, um, you know, we talked, I talked earlier about the 20, getting the 25 to 1. I mean, the last budget, it was mentioned all throughout the budget. Now it's not mentioned once. I, I, I mean, is the department abandoning that promise? I mean, it seems to me it is. And, and people just want to know. No, sir, we're not. Okay. Um, the, 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 I can, I'll give you a very short okay. answer. No, we're not. Okay, thank you. Um, there's a new uh, Veteran and Family Wellbeing Fund that starts April 1st. Small amount of money, $3 million, uh, for, to develop new and innovative ways to support veterans and their families by conducting research and implementing initiatives and projects. And um, we, we know that uh, in the States, I think, and, and Mr. Chair, you talked about it as well, the importance of hiring vets so that they're caseworkers. Um, and in the States, I think they're at 30%, actually, of their caseworkers frontline are, are veterans. Um, and under the Veterans Hiring Initiative and Hiring Act, I, I think uh, most departments are not really utilizing the act at the extent that we'd like to see. Is there a target that the department has on rehiring vets like they've done in the states. They're, they're at 30 percent. I know Pacific Coast University, uh, a, a school in British Columbia that is uh, an institute for workplace health, hiring people, training them for return to work. You know, they've put forward a proposal and, and there's just no, there's a gap. There's not a lot of money there for this and, and I think it's really important and as the uh, department understand the significance of it, we know that we need, you know, uh, that's often need that person they can trust someone they've served with. Maybe you could speak to that. Um, veterans hiring is uh, absolutely at the core in the uh, program in Veterans Affairs Canada. We have a uh, one side of the uh, program that focuses on uh, the hiring of veterans uh, in the private industry. Um, there's an area within my own branch. It's called the Veterans in the Public Service Unit. It was created together with the Public Service Commission and. Uh, um, Public Services Canada, uh, there has been a pledge of several ministers and deputies to hire, uh, increase the number of veterans in the public service. Uh, it uh, is undertaking a pilot at this moment. Uh, it's gaining traction and uh, in fact we had a job fair at the Invictus Games last year that was uh, very successful. Um, so the next phase will be uh, reaching out to regions across the country right. uh, and making more efforts in that regard. Ms. Stewart, and I really appreciate it, is, there, is the government looking at setting targets though? Because I think when we set targets, we have an opportunity to try to meet those targets or not. I know that, um, again, Pacific Coast University applied for a pilot project proposal to work with BAC to try to move this forward and they were denied to direct it to this fund which is really a startup fund if you call it three million dollars isn't a lot of money to to do many things um, is is the government looking at setting clear targets so that they can get there <coughs> and what would the number be that the department would like to see I can't speak to that number um, I can tell you that uh, the linkages with the universities is something that we are uh, engaged with um, and I, I um, I wouldn't wish to speculate, but I can say that we do have percentage targets uh, within the uh, federal public service. Oh, you do? do yes. Can you get those numbers to us so we Absolutely. have numbers of what we're looking at so yes. that we can monitor that? And, and if I may add, it's centered primarily on the um, statutory hiring requirement of mm. uh, medically released vets and also on the regulatory um, and all other vets. But uh, we take the Veterans Hiring Act uh, very seriously in that regard. Great. 
we've got a lot of veterans that are becoming homeless with the housing crisis certainly on Vancouver Island uh, you know I've got a, a veteran in the Comox Valley in Valley William Webb he's got a family he's getting looking at hitting the street and there's a veterans emergency fund that you talked about can you elaborate about that fund because we're challenged finding out more info about it uh, thank you for the information the veterans emergency fund allows us I, I actually think in the 2017 budget I think I've told this committee before this was the one that really got me excited and most people often what like when you say you talk about billions and all at once you talk about one million dollar a year why would that catch my attention It's because that actually will allow us to do stuff directly on the ground mm -hmm. as the deputy minister mentioned earlier when when uh, a veteran comes to the office we have new programs starting in 18 but or April 1st but mm -hmm. prior to that all our programming were based on a service relationship so we had to adjudicate we had to figure out if your injury was service related before we could help you not to say we wouldn't work with the you know the Legion and everybody else but this fund it doesn't matter so now if somebody knocks on the door and says I'm homeless I don't know where to go we can actually uh, use this money working with our partners but put them into you know the grand the grand Holman I think it's called in Calgary where we often put people up or or other hotels where we need to or, or get them a meal okay. or help them immediately Great. we look forward to hearing more about it so okay. we can get that. Six minutes. 